just now tuning in, we're watching the title bout between Bruce Bonecrusher Haley and Cowboy Jack Crawford. Let me tell you, folks, this one is not pretty. Cowboy is on the mat. He's getting Absolutely. Uh, Bonecrusher has established that position and shown an amazing amount of pounds here. I don't see why official Jeff Franklin has not stopped this fight. Oh, oh, oh. And a dirty elbow after the bell. Jack almost got the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. He's way too confident. Yeah. Why, boy? I'm yeah. gonna beat your ass yeah. like your daddy used to beat your mama. Yeah. Get that. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Cowboy has to dig deep if he wants to win this match. He has to dig deep and find something within himself to really come back and win this match. We're in round three. They're going to call us. Dead? The fuck do you mean he's dead? <laughs> Investigation on what? My heart goes out to him and his family, man. And I'm truly sorry. But, no, I need my money. 
I was a 100 to 1 underdog. I lost my last nine fights. Oh, shit. God damn it! Barney, you're supposed to be my fucking agent and you're acting like a goddamn lawyer! This is a million dollar payout. Do you not understand this? I need my fucking money. I got my family living in a shitty ass trailer park and all they could do is eat fucking rice and beans. We can't afford shit right now. I need my shit. Fucking take care of it. Fuck. 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 Dead. Oh, fuck. Yeah. They, they couldn't fucking revive him on the way to the hospital. Fuck, 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 fuck! I was afraid something like this was gonna happen. What happened in there, son? Why don't you let him go? Ain't nothing good gonna come from this. This is bad. This is real bad. started throwing trash at you. Yeah. When I went to pick up Christiana from Mama, they said on the news that Haley's dead. What are we gonna do? Look, I don't wanna talk about it right now. Everything's going to be all right. <laughs> you promised me Paris, Wayne. It's the 20th and we haven't left this ranch yet. There are 11 days left in the month, Summer. We can get on my case if we haven't gone anywhere in the next 10. I think I found the investment we've been looking for. I saw it too. And it is definitely what we've been looking for. There's some things you need to be doing outside the house today, sweetie. Fucking guy has abducted and murdered nine women and children in the last six months, and we haven't even come close to sniffing this trail. Homicide has some good leads. We just kind of let them work it out. How many more people going to die while they work through their good leads? I'm saying that so I don't have to tell you to relax, Bryce. You keep running hot like this, you're going to bring the wrong kind of attention to you. Well, what you call running hot, I call being a good cop. Well, Captain calls it reckless. You really got to bring it down, man. Seriously. It's fucking God. What the fuck are you doing here, Martin? What the fuck am I doing here? Oh, the captain sent me to make sure you don't shoot this guy for surrendering peacefully, hothead. <laughs> I can't stand this fucking guy. So you got another haircut?
the fuck is that? Jack Crawford. Yeah. Why? Wow, what's up? You're under arrest for the murder of Bruce Haley. You have the right to remain silent. If you give up that right, asshole, anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. You understand? I said, do you understand? Yes. Hey. Not in front of the kid. You live in a fucking trailer park, asshole. I doubt if it's the first time she's seen her daddy in handcuffs. Ma'am, I'm sorry, but we have to take the news. He's being charged with the murder of Bruce Haley. Murder? Baby, everything will be all right. I need you to contact Uncle Clyde. Tell him to get in touch with Barney. I'll know exactly what to do. Look, this is just one huge misunderstanding. This is Detective Wilson. About time. All right, we'll be there shortly, Cap. Let's roll. They got a lead on the family snatcher case. Do me a favor. Take the suspect down to the station. <laughs> what? And miss a piece of this action? Hell no. What we got, Cap? Early this morning, around 6, a woman in London Heights called in reporting what she thought was a woman and her children being abducted. She took down part of the license plate, but when we got to the residence, what we discovered was a white male in his 40s, in his truck, shot in the head. Okay, what the fuck are we doing out here? Why aren't we in there on this guy? You think this is a family snatcher? Yep, I believe so. Again, why the fuck are we out here? Look, without a warrant, we cannot set foot in that house. Okay, we don't need to be sued for unlawful entry. The warrant is en route now. Cap, there's a fucking dead guy laying in the driveway. If that's not probable cause, I don't know what is. That woman and her family are in danger. It's called protocol, Bryce. You know, you think you'd learn to take it easy after what happened to your wife. The fuck you say to whoa, me? Whoa, 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 cool, cool it, cool it, all right? Whoa, whoa, cool it, cool it, cool it here, all right? Look, shut up, Martin, Same. shut up. I said the warrant is on its way. Yeah, man, fuck that warrant. That woman and her family are in danger, and I'm not about to let them die because we waited around for a goddamn piece of paper. I told you he was a loose cannon. He should never have been promoted to first grade anything. You're a fucking douchebag. Oh, you're so poetic, Talcott. Show you some poetry. God damn it. This is Captain Brown. Cover Detective Wilson from the rear. Look, and do not, do not enter in unless you hear gunshots. Or I give the word.
What are you doing here? What are you doing in my fucking home? Look, look, I'm a police officer, all right? And I want to help you, but I need you to drop your weapon and let the little boy go. Are you serious? You drop your weapon. Look, you're sick, all right? I am not going back to fucking prison. Hey, 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 no one said anything about prison. Did I say anything about prison? No, all right? I just want to get you help. You're sick. You need help. There's no help in me. I'm going to cut him a fucking new asshole. Now you don't want to do that. <laughs> I'm going to cut his throat on the count of three. Think about what you're doing. One. Just let him go. Two. I'm warning you. Three. Come here, come here, come here. You okay? You hurt? It's a dangerous sport, Your Honor. Things like this happen all the time. It's unfortunate that this time it ended in someone's death. We ask for my client to be released on a signature bond. Your Honor, we ask for a $1 million bond due to the defendant's malicious conduct, which resulted in death. The defendant continued to strangle the victim for over a minute while the referee and others attempted to stop him. In light of the seriousness of this charge, I'm setting bond at $500,000. An evidentiary hearing will be set for next month. Court is adjourned. Prosecutor gave me a deal to get the second degree charge dropped. What kind of deal, baby? I have to forfeit the title, give up the money, everything else goes to Haley's family. Okay. They offered me a plea for seven years to drop the manslaughter. And with parole, I'd be out in two or three. Three. I accepted it. <laughs> I just need to know. Can you wait for me? Do I have a choice? I love you. Cowboy, God, this is this is gonna be hard on us. Tell me what you need, man. Can you please take care of Amy while I'm in here? Of course, brother. I really appreciate it, Timmy. I really do. Well, don't even sweat it, brother. You know I got you, man. How far we go back? Can you give us a couple minutes? All right, man, yeah. Look, you hang in there, okay? Be out in no time. No time.
Baby, I don't know how I'm going to make it through without you. Baby, you're going to be strong. That's how. You hear me? I promise everything will be all right. Look, Jimmy Lee and, and Uncle Clyde are going to take care of everything else, all right? Jack Crawford, a struggling mixed martial artist, was sentenced to seven years for manslaughter in a plea agreement for the death of Bruce Haley. In doing so, he forfeits a championship title along with a $1 million purse. Damn. Already? I figured my first letter would be from my wife. She's so too popular, man. Can you believe it? Never had a fan in my life. <laughs> Shit, it might be hate mail. <laughs> Maybe. Check it out. Oh, 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 titty meat. That's a titty meat. Well, let me find out you like the brown sugar. Hey, Jack. My name's Samantha Jackson. And I'm one of your biggest fans. It's a shame what happened, but... I will always support you. I think you're gorgeous. And I hope you think I am too. If you need anything, let me know. Very truly yours, Miss Jackson. God <laughs> damn. I had a real fan. Bro, I have never had a fan in my life. Man, you probably getting catfish. You probably 500 pounds. You say so, man. She don't look 500 pounds. She not 500 pounds. Who wrote that letter might be 500 pounds. <laughs> you shut up, I might let you share. Why are you taking it like this, Bryce? Captain just told me that Internal Affairs is investigating me for the family snatcher. It's not just because the family snatcher. It's for Either way, we both know how this plays out. Listen, shit's gonna get sorted out, okay? And eventually you'll be back in no time. Well, I'm glad one of us is confident. I am. It's gonna be okay. Hey. Yeah. All right. Yeah, anyway, I... I'll see you, okay? What are you doing? Shit. Price. You scared the shit out of me. You shouldn't have been listening so far. No, I wasn't listening to anything. Mm-hmm. What are you doing here? Fucking monthly psychopath. Same time, same place for the last three years. Man, it's, it's crazy that case is still open. Mm -hmm. We miss you around here. You know we're all behind you, right? You're a good cop. Who was a good cop? No, you are a good cop. Listen, there's a little more to this. We gotta talk. Is your number still the same? Yeah, it's still the same. Okay. Well, well, well. It isn't the old hot shot. Oh, let me guess. Monthly psych evals. You know, it must suck to have to come in here once a month and walk these halls where nobody wants you. What the fuck do you want? Oh, nothing, man. I'm just checking on you. <laughs> oh, I heard you got a job as a as a janitor. Oh. <laughs> Or was it a jailer? <laughs> I'm working probation and parole. It's only temporary, though, so I hope you're not getting too comfortable with my old job. Too comfortable with your old job? I've had your old job for over three years now. I'd say I'm pretty fucking comfortable. 
Hey, hey, don't pay any attention to him. Martin's an asshole. Fuck him. Okay. I can see you're not in the mood to talk right now. Hey, look, man, it was good to see you. Call me, all right? Okay. And you didn't return my call last night. I know. I had to work late last night. Look, can we just do this shit and get it over with? Yeah, I actually have my computer in here. I was working on a few things, so we can knock it out if you want. Look, Nina, I'm sick of playing doctor with you. How much longer we gotta do this shit? When my evaluation is finished, and most importantly, when Internal Affairs says it's over. This doesn't seem like bureaucratic bullshit to you? You're talking about me or my job? Both. I disagree. In light of the past few years of your career, I feel it's very appropriate and necessary. So, how's your sobriety coming along? Any drugs, alcohol, or weed? Come on now, you slept over for the past two years. I think you can answer that question. And your dreams of suicide? <laughs> Jesus Christ, do I have to answer that every time? I have to ask them every time, yes. All right, fine. What are my thoughts about suicide? My wife was murdered when she was eight months pregnant. She died in my arms. I mean, the story stays the same every time. I know, and as we've discussed before, the fear is that it's on an unconscious level. There may be a connection between the nine shootings you've been involved with, four which resulted in death, and three just months after your wife's murder. So that's what this shit's about? They think I'm going crazy because my wife was murdered? I wasn't just implying that. Then what were you implying? I was merely trying to say that- Let me remind you that I graduated with honors from the police academy, only to be placed in the worst goddamn part of West Texas. Gang, riddled, drug-infested neighborhoods while my white peers, they were assigned patrol cars in nice, rich areas. And the only way I managed to pull myself out of that shithole was a fucking fluke. Oh, and uh, pulling down the Mexican Mafia? That shit wasn't hard. Hell, there was drugs all over the streets. Any decent cop with a nose, all he had to do was follow the smell. And you're right. They did murder my wife in retaliation. But that ain't what this is about. This is about them not letting a black man be excellent at his job, and it's obvious you don't know how that feels. Do you want a fucking cookie? Pat on the back or, or a hug? How dare you come in here and accuse me of not knowing what it's like to be a minority. I but you're not a black I minority. I am so sick and tired of black men blaming white men for their problems. Need I remind you, I have studied your file. You've received numerous promotions, honorary citations, including being the first man, black or white, to be promoted to first detective at the age of 31. You want to blame that on the fucking white man too? Well, the same system that builds you up will tear you down. Get the fuck out of here. Just get the fuck out. This investigation is part of police protocol. You shot a man. I shot a 48-year-old child molester who had already killed 11 people. And while everyone in this building applauds you for that, it does not excuse the fact that you went in without a warrant or permission of your captain. And that warrants a damn three-year investigation? <laughs> you know what? Fuck this. Where are you going? I think we're done here.
Yo, chill, bruh. You act like you about to stand in front of a firing squad, man. You got parole. No, you don't understand, man. She's getting so big now, man. She's growing up. She's she's literally a big girl now. Time has freaking flown. You'd have thought three and a half years in the joint might have helped. Oh, I'm getting out, so now you got jokes. I got you, bro. I got you. <laughs> see, I see how this nah, is. Nah, nah. Instead of doing some sappy shit, man, you got my address. You got my number. Don't be a stranger, man. Should I be all right? If you want to leave me them pictures on titty me. See, I was one step ahead of you. Yeah, my dog. Hey, cowboy. Need a ride? Uh, do I know you? It's me, your biggest fan. Samantha, is that you? Why don't you come on in? I'll show you how much I've been looking forward to meeting you. Samantha, I'm sorry, but I can't. My wife is waiting for me at the bus station. Thank you for riding me all those years. But I just have to get home to my family. Where's your daddy? Oh! I missed you. I've missed you too. You've gotten so big. Duh, I've gotten older. You have gotten older. You're like way taller than me right now. What's this? Oh, we got one of yours here. Failed to report after being released from prison. Go pick him up on a violation. He's going back to jail. Shit. Small world. Fuck? Get dressed. The, the, wh who the fuck are you? Clothes, Mr. Crawford. I'm taking you to jail for violating your parole. 
I'm fucking violating my parole. I didn't do shit. That's right. You were supposed to report to my office yesterday at 6 a.m. You forget? Oh, fuck, dude. Look, honestly forgot. Look, I got, I got a job and everything, man. Every, everything's cool. That's good. That's good. You can tell it to the judge. Now get the fuck up. I'm not going back to jail, man. You hear me? I already lost everything. Lost my title, lost my money, lost my fucking... You about to lose a lot more. Now get your goddamn hands off me. Just fucking do it, motherfucker. Shoot me! Do it, motherfucker, shoot me! Do it! Do it! Daddy? Oh, hey, baby. Why are you supposed to be at school? I missed the bus again. Hi, Mr. Wilson. How do you know my name? Your daughter, Ebony, is in my third grade class. You came to our school recital. When Ebony forgot her lines, you whispered them to her. Yeah, um, I remember that. Uh, that was a long time ago. The next recital, my daddy's gonna be there. Right, Daddy? Oh, baby, this is Officer Bryce. He's my parole officer. And it's really, it's really going to be up to him if, if I'm going to be at the recital or not. Mr. Wilson, can my daddy come to my next recital? Uh, sweetheart, can I talk to your father in private, please? It's okay, baby. I'll talk to Bryce. You're a real piece of shit, you know that? Bringing oh, your daughter into this? How was I supposed to know she was home? Oh, bullshit. Bullshit nothing, you came in my fucking house. But since you're so hell-bent on bringing my ass back to jail, breaking my daughter's heart again, why don't you just fucking do it? You got one more time to put your goddamn hands on me. Look, you're the one who broke the law. I have to take you in. Maybe if this was a couple years ago, That's I it. A different That's it. I remember you now. You're the same fucking cop that arrested my ass three years ago. In front of my dog. Yeah, I did. And what? You fucking did it three years ago. Look, I have to take you in. I don't have a choice. Do you not realize you have a choice? We all got a fucking choice. All right, look. My report is gonna say when I came over here, you were in bed with the flu, all right? You were so sick you couldn't get out of bed. That's it? Yeah, that's it. That's it? Man, thank you. No, don't thank me, all right? You need to be thanking that little girl in there because your ass was this close from going to jail. I, I really appreciate it. Here. Keep that on you at all times. Darcy, thank you. I don't wanna shake your fucking hand. Make sure you're at my office tomorrow at 6 a.m. I'll be there at 5.55. I'm not fucking around, Jack. Me I'm neither. serious. I'm, you have my word. I'll be there. I was standing at the door before I came in. I heard him say he was gonna take you back to prison. Daddy, Sweetheart. please don't leave us again. Sweetheart. Look, Daddy's not going anywhere. Promise? I promise. Hey, cowboy. 
<laughs> she has a small world. Samantha? You gonna buy me a drink? Stare at my tits all night. Hey, give the lady whatever she wants. I'll have what he's having. Make it a double. Um, how's that job search going? Not too bad. I actually landed a gig at the rodeo today. But I thought after the last drug scandal, where the guy died on the bull, they weren't hiring any more ex comics They did, but a lot on the resume. <laughs> Shame. Well, we do have a position available at my husband's ranch. It'd be perfect for him. And what might that be? Sensitive material handling. Let's not talk about yours. Look, I've had your picture in my hand for the past four years. <laughs> At least you've had the real thing. You think so, huh? Look, my husband is a businessman. He only touched me if I had money coming out of my pussy. So why stay? Hmm, because... I get to fuck you in a Mercedes right now. And besides, great Dr. Anderson got to die one day, huh? I guess. Hmm. So, you ready to go again? We should argue more often. <laughs> I think I can arrange that. <laughs> uh, let me go get this breakfast. You definitely deserve it now. No, no, no. Let me do it. It's the least I can do, especially after the way I've been acting during this whole investigation. They've already cooked it. Well, let me serve it to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> down for 7 a.m. Yeah. on Monday. And be on time this time, all right? I don't want to have to come find you. All right. Uh, your favorite parolee is back at it again. <laughs> oh, yeah? Who might that be? Jack Crawford. I just got a call that he's been working illegally because he failed to tell his employer that he's a convicted felon. Shit. So I need you to go and find his boss, check it all out, see if it's true. I hope it's not true. I mean, the guy's been doing so well for the last couple months. I mean, making his payments on time, staying out of trouble. 
Yeah, but if it is true, then he's been breaking the law. Goddamn parole officer. Came to my work and got my ass fired today. Oh, God. Oh, Jack, no. Hey. Hey, talk to me. Baby, stop. Look, I can't have you all up in my space right now. I'm sorry. I just, I can't do it. I can't talk to you? I can't hold you. You haven't made love to me all the months you've been back from prison. God, what is this killing me inside? It's killing you. It's killing you. What about me, Amy? What about how I feel? Have you ever realized or wonder what it would be like to just get out of prison and then your whole fucking life is completely different? We didn't change, Jack. I can't even look at you. Excuse me. Thank you. Hey, cowboy. We still on for tonight? I know it's been two days since I saw you. I'm just going through some personal stuff right now, Samantha. I just lost my job and I think my wife is catching on to us. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Look, if you need me to be here for you, baby, I'm here. If you need cash, whatever, I got you. As far as your wife. Mm -hmm. Think we should stop seeing each other? I don't know. I'm, I'm just still trying to figure out how a white boy from Jesper, Texas fell for a black girl from Houston. Because, cowboy, what we have is colorblind. Look, where I'm from, my friends, my family, it's just not acceptable. Well, how do you think that makes me feel? like that in years and when it finally happens it's from some white country cowboy from Jesper, Texas look no one has made me feel the way you made me feel so I need you to be honest with me and tell me you don't feel the same way too look I do I just I just don't know what I want okay cowboy well since it's so wrong then you and I both can walk away from this. If that's what you want. Yeah. Look, I don't, I don't, I just, I just don't know what I want. But I do know what I need. Hello, may I help you? Hey, is Dr. Anderson here? Dr. Anderson is out there. Dr. Anderson? It's me. How can I help? How you doing, sir? Name's Jack Crawford. Nice to meet you. Likewise, I heard that you were looking for a good handyman. I can pretty much do anything. From bailing hay, breeding horses, doing crops, 
Hell, I mean... Landscaping. Yeah, my wife said you'd be coming out sometime today. Very lovely lady, sir. I'll assume you're not sleeping with her on account she sent you out here for a job. No, sir. I'm a very happy married man. Tell you what. Garcia's gonna be out here in a few minutes. Okay. Got a lot of landscaping out here to do. So you work with him today. And if I like what you did, you got the job. But I gotta be heading into town. I gotta mean to catch up with you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dr. Anderson, good afternoon. How are you? Well, it's good. Excellent. What do you think? I told you I can literally do anything. I got the terrace taken care of, I got the stable taken care of, all the landscaping, everything's done to perfection. Welcome to the ranch, Jack Crawford. Thank you, sir. Here, very Just excited. Have a good one, man. Dr. Anderson, Garcia, has anybody ever told y'all that y'all look alike? Yeah, I told that before. Thank you. Last one, Jack. Shutting down. Honey, you looking for a good time? Samantha. Jack. Jack. Well, where are you? I didn't mean to upset him. Where, where the fuck are you? Who hit you? My husband. He found out about us. I don't know how, but I think he has a gun. Maybe I'm on my way right now. Fuck, I swear to God, if he hits you, I'm gonna kill him. This broke ass probably ain't have no money anyways. Samantha!
This better be good. I need you to come out to the Anderson Ranch. It's a double homicide. <clears throat> the doctor and his maid. The doctor was shot several times in the face. Shit. Why do they need me to come down? In case you forgot, I don't work homicide anymore. Captain Brown told me to call you. All right, tell me about the rest when I get there. Looks like a fucking war zone out there. Yeah, it's just fucked up, huh? Run it down for me. All right, so the wife here shot while she's in bed. She grabs her husband's gun, catches the intruder while he's leaving, fires up a whole clip from the staircase, catches him in the back of the head. Hold on, if the intruder was leaving, then why was his body found here? You tell me. But why did Cap want me to come down again? We found one of your cards in uh, the suspect's wallet. Jack Crawford, you know him? Shit. Yeah, I know him. He's one of my cases. Went to jail for manslaughter, got out about seven months ago. I guess the captain wanted to pick your brain as far as why he might have been here. Beats me. I guess Martin's heading up this investigation, huh? You guessed it. If you ask me, something stinks. Martin's been acting strange. When we got here, he made his way outside while he came in to talk to the wife. You and I both know Martin's an overzealous asshole. I wouldn't look too much into it. It's not just that. There's some stuff I need to show you, just not here. It's good to see you, Bryce. Likewise, Cap. Tucker was just telling me why you requested me to come down. Yeah. I need a different set of eyes on this. What the hell are you doing here? I was invited. I don't give a damn if you were invited. You know what, Bryce, in case you've forgotten, you no longer run this division. I do. So it doesn't matter to me who invited you. Just get the hell off of my crime scene. Even if it was me? Hmm? Sorry, Cat. I didn't know. Well... Maybe next time you should start by asking instead of barking. Now I requested Bryce to stop by. The suspect is one of his probationers. Besides, I wanted his take on it. His take? Come on, Cap, it's an open and shut case. There's no such thing as an open and shut case when there's this much blood everywhere. Oh, that's where you're wrong, hotshot. Now look, the wife said she heard shots. So she grabs the husband's gun, she comes downstairs, and that's when she discovers the intruder. She fires an array of shots and ends up wounding him in the head and neck. It's an open and shut case, just like I said. You sure about that? Yeah, why wouldn't I be sure? It's an eyewitness account. From the shooter. From the shooter. Whoa, 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 what are you saying, Bryce? If she fired an array of shots, excuse me, why would there be two bullet holes here in the ground that seem to have been shot at point blank range? Almost deliberately. Deliberately, yeah, the husband was shot multiple times, asshole. <laughs> the bullets could have come from anywhere. <laughs> this is your story, you sticking to it? Yeah, it's my story, I'm sticking to well, it. Look, 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 look. Let's just have forensics check those bullet holes. And you, take Ms. Anderson down to the station to give an official statement. Well, according to this, a bullet grazed your skull and a piece of your lung is missing. But, if you ask me, you got off easy compared to the other two. Bryce, you know I didn't do anything. I didn't accuse you of anything. Okay, well somebody is. I got cops outside my door. Woke up with my fucking hands handcuffed. What is that shit supposed to mean? Oh, Jack, Jack, Jack. You've really got yourself into some deep shit this time. Yeah, I think. 
Hey man, look, you ain't got an answer to me, but I'm asking you. Did you kill those people? I told you I didn't fucking kill anybody, Bryce. Ah. So I believe you, and I can try to help you, but you gotta be straight up with me, all right? What were you doing at the ranch at 1 a.m.? I told you there's nothing to tell. I didn't do anything. Jack, I don't think you know how serious this is. You're being charged with two counts of first degree murder. The gun that killed the doc has your prints on it and you had enough alcohol in your system for three people. So I suggest if you know something, you tell me now. I went to the bar. I just I had to blow off some steam, man. Go on. And Samantha called. Who's Samantha? Dr. Anderson's wife. You mean Summer? No, I mean Samantha. No, her name is Summer Anderson. What the fuck are you talking about? Why would she be calling you? Well, it's a long story. Make it short. Summer, fuck, Samantha, whatever, whatever you, whatever you want to call her. Me and her were having an affair. She ended up getting me a job working for her husband. And here I thought this was going to be a simple story. Shit, I told you. Hmm. Alright, so let me get this right. So you're fucking the boss's wife, who you think's name is Samantha. You take a job at her husband's ranch, and a couple of weeks after you were hired, the doc and the maid are brutally murdered. Sound about right? Fucking crazy, but yeah, it's the truth. Look, man. She was riding me when I was in prison. So her name was Samantha Jackson. She told me she was my biggest fan. What was I supposed to do? We connected when we got out, and then she ended up getting me a job at the ranch. Who can verify that you were at the ranch? The maid. Well, she's dead. Next. There's a dude, a Mexican dude. His name was Garcia. I don't really remember his last name, but he was definitely there the day I showed up. Who told you about the job at the ranch? Summer told me. She told me when I got out. And after I got fired from the rodeo because of your fucking ass. Thanks, by the way. But she got me the gig. She forget to tell you it came with the death penalty? Look, she would not do that. Oh, come on. Wake the fuck up, Jack. All right? She shot you. Damn near blew your head off. Look, maybe... Maybe she didn't know it was me. Look, it was dark. I got hit in the head from behind, and then I got shot. It couldn't have been her. Tell me about the phone call. Samantha called, hysterically crying. Said her husband hit her, needed my help. Yeah. I was drunk and angry. I wanted to break the fucking dude's neck. I got to the house, the door was open, walked inside. Next thing I see, I see two dead bodies Bryce, you gotta believe me. I didn't. I didn't kill anybody. I swear to God. Like I need your help. Nobody fucking believes me. Nobody's gonna believe me. Bryce, seriously. Figure this shit out for me, man. Detective Talcott. Talcott. It's Bryce. Hey, I may have some information on the Anderson murder. Like what? Meet me at our spot tonight. Alright.
Gordon Crawford, he and the wife were having an affair. He also said that earlier in the week, Summer got him a job working at the ranch for the doctor. That's loaded. Does he have any witnesses? Well, the only witnesses that can verify that Crawford even showed up at the ranch are the maid, who's dead, and a guy named Garcia. There was no Garcia at the ranch that night, and more than likely he was undocumented because, it's like the maid, there's no record of him. Jack also said that Summer called him the night of the murders, claiming that her husband was beat, asked him to come get him. <laughs> How do you know all this? Crawford's so. Oh, he woke up about an hour ago. Well, Crawford's phone records do show a, a call around midnight, but it was from a blocked number. More than likely a burner. Shit doesn't add up. No, it, it doesn't add up. And not to pile on, but remember I told you uh, Martin was acting funny? Yeah. I've been following him. He and the doctor, they were involved in something. I don't know what it is yet, but they would always meet at Martin's place after hours. And now the doctor's dead. And now the doctor's dead. And the prosecutor, Ascraft, he says he has an airtight case against your boy Crawford. His prints are on the murder weapon. There's witnesses saying that he was yelling out threats. I mean, there's a whole grocery list against them, man. And so far, the wife's story checks out. It's gonna take forensics a few weeks to process the scene. She's lying. She said she was terrified. She blacked out. She can't remember how many shots were fired or where she was standing. Ballistics, they can't find all the evidence, which makes a match impossible. Shit. Yeah. Shit. She got us. <laughs> I bet there was an insurance policy, too. <laughs> Ten million. Yeah. To be given to Summer in the event of an untimely death. It's, this whole thing is fucked up. The doctor's practice was questionable. Suspicious activity on both business and personal accounts. There's almost $100 million unaccounted for. How is this going unnoticed? The doctor was a major contributor to the mayor's campaign for years. He, he's deep in the community with the, the fucking rec center, the homeless shelter, the goddamn shopping mall. <laughs> the man was fucking connected. There's an eyes only meeting tomorrow to discuss what to do now that the doctor's dead. Well, I'll make sure of that. Summer's in the middle of all of this. I know. open. I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions. I promise it won't take too long. Proceed. On the night of the murders, you said that you were awakened by shots? Yes. I'm a light sleeper. You also said that when you were coming down the staircase, you saw the intruder leaving before you began firing? Look, all of this is in my file, officer. No, Bryce. Bryce Wilson, not officer. Well, Bryce, 
like I said, I didn't see anything or remember anything after I got to the stairs. Did you know Jack Crawford prior to the murders? No. Sure about that? Yes, I'm sure. It's not what he said. Wait, he's alive? He said that you got him a job working for your husband at the ranch. And he also said that the two of you were having an affair. That's insane. Mrs. Anderson, are you sure you didn't come off the steps at any time when you began fire? Yes, why? Because out of the 15 bullets that were fired, the two that hit Jack Crawford appeared to be fired at point blank range, according to the lab. Can I have a drink? By all means. Would offer you something, but I know you're recovering Alki. How did you know that? Hmm. Well, I know a lot about you, Mr. Price. But there's more I would like to find out. You don't seem too broken up for a woman whose husband was murdered last week. <laughs> I'm very broken. But I'm strong. See, if I showed you my scars, I would have died last week, too. Jack said you called him the night of the murders. Jack Crawford is lying. Oh, someone is definitely lying. You know, I think it's time for you to see yourself out. I have to grieve over my dead husband. Have a good day. You too, officer. Hey, cowboy. I thought I told you not to come. No matter what's going on with us, I'm not gonna let you sit here and go through this alone. Amy, I want you to leave. Seriously, never come back. What? I want you to send me the divorce papers. No, I won't. You didn't kill those people. I know it, and they'll know it, too. I'm not going to leave your side again. I just don't want to put you through this again. I won't let you push me away. Hello? Bryce. You need to listen to me. The police are on their way. They're coming to arrest you. What? The police are on their way. They're coming to arrest you. For what? Summer Anderson said you went to her house posing as a police officer. She's saying you sexually harassed her. That's insane. The only thing I did is go over there to see what really happened. That's it. You shouldn't have gone there, period. This is a slam dunk in the IA investigation. You getting arrested is all that they needed. Come on, this is bullshit. I never told her I was an officer. Dr. Anderson was a very powerful man. Look, the one thing that you have in your favor is that Captain Brown is defending you in this whole thing. He's in a meeting right now with a prosecutor just- Shit to me. Mrs. Anderson, could you please point to the man who invaded your home and who you shot on that horrible night when you discovered your husband and maid dead? That's him right there. Judge, this is bullshit. She set me up. I heard him say I'm gonna kill that son of a bitch. Then he ran out of the bar angry as hell. Your Honor, the state rest its case. 
Is there sufficient enough evidence to sustain a death penalty conviction? Yes, sir. It's all laid out for you. Oh. I'm sorry for interrupting like this, but I need you all to hear me out. You're making a big mistake. You're about to send an innocent man to jail for the rest of his life. The only mistake we're making is talking to you. A mistake? Like what? What are you saying, son? Make it brief, and then show yourself out the door. Mayor, from the very beginning, this whole investigation has been botched. Botched? Captain, this is ridiculous. Why are we listening to a man that's been posing as a cop to sexually harass the victim's wife? That's a fucking lie, and you know it. I never did that. Look, Summer Anderson is hiding something. No, 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 no. I've known Dr. Anderson and his wife for many years. You're the one that's lying. This is the same kind of shit that got you into trouble in the first place. No, what got me into trouble was working with assholes like this. No, 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 fuck you. No. Look, speak your piece and leave, Brace. Look, I'm sorry about that. But there wasn't a full investigation done. Explain. The trajectory of the bullets that Summer Anderson fired. The bullet holes in the wall versus the two in the floor. Hell, there was no GSR on Jack Crawford's hands proving that he actually fired a gun. There was blood everywhere, Sherlock. The medical staff at the emergency room washed his hands, probably washing away the evidence. Did they wash away the ballistics evidence too? Or what about the fact that Jack and Summer were having an effect? Oh, desperate reaches of a man about to spend the rest of his life in prison. All right, dickhead, what about the $98 million that was boosted from... Whoa, 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 whoa. Nothing to do with the fact that Jack Crawford killed Dr. Anderson and their maid. You'd like everyone to think that, wouldn't you? Cap, you can't close this case yet. Why wasn't I informed about this? Why weren't you informed about this? Because he's lying. He'll say anything to get his job back. The missing money is a completely different matter that my office is looking into. As for Jack and Mrs. Anderson, Crawford will say anything to avoid having to go back to prison. Anything. Yeah. My investigation confirms the same conclusions. I've heard enough. Mr. Wilson, see yourself out the door. Oh my God, would you just open your fucking eyes? There's, this investigation has so many holes in it. All right, where was the blood on Jack Crawford's clothes? Dr. Braun, where was the blood? Doctor. Could anything this man's saying be true? <clears throat> well, to be honest with you, I've examined hundreds of crime scenes. In this case, the maid was severely stabbed. She suffered multiple wounds to her arms and neck, suggesting that she put up a fight. And judging by the blood splatters on the wall and the significant amount of blood that she lost, I find it highly improbable that Mr. Crawford would get blood or fibers on his clothing. Thank you. Cap, you can't close this case. You gotta look into it a little bit more. You know, if you paid this much attention to your wife, she'd probably still be alive. The fuck you, sir? Day one. All you've done is try to sabotage this investigation in the hopes of getting your old job back. But you know what? This job requires someone a little less suicidal than you. Whoa, 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 Do it. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. You mention my dead wife again, and I'll fucking kill you. Look, just look through all the evidence before you send an innocent man to jail for the rest of his life. Please. Bitch. Price, what are you talking about? You gave him my file? I gave who your file? Don't I fucking don't lie to me. About. You know damn well what I'm talking about. Martin Steele? I didn't give him your file. A few weeks back, he came to my office and said that I needed to review your file. And you just gave it to him? He only had it for a few hours and he brought it right back. 
Bryce, you're hurting my arm. I'm so fucking stupid. Bryce, you're hurting me. <laughs> Motherfucker, it's been blocking me this whole time. You're being paranoid. It's standard procedure. They only wanted to check some dates and make sure you're showing up regularly. I'm gonna tell you this once and one time only. Stay the fuck away from me! Where were you tonight? I was at home in bed. Why? Give me your gun. I don't have it. It's at home in my top drawer. Hold on, wait a minute, Cap. You don't think I had something to do with this no, shit, dude? Bring it down to the station by 9 a.m. or I'm issuing a warrant for your arrest. Come on, Cap. You can't be serious. I'm you as serious as that bullet hole in that man's head. 9 a.m. or I'm having you picked up. Come on, Cap. This is bullshit! 9 a.m. What are you talking about? Please tell me you know where your gun is. Yes, at home. Why? Because they're gonna try to pin this on you. There's an eyewitness that says that they saw a black guy leave this hotel room. They found a gun. The make and model is yours. This is bullshit. I know it's bullshit. The captain knows it's bullshit. That's why he's giving you a few hours to figure out who's trying to make it look like you murdered Martin. Just bring your gun in, man. Just do it, man. Fuck. if you can't find your gun. Like I said, we got a problem. You gotta be kidding me. Man, I wish I was. Well, you need to keep looking. Captain Brown is on your side, but you're gonna get charged for murder if you're not here. Shit. Man, somebody's trying to set me up. Bryce, they're coming to get you now. You gotta get out of your house. No, I gotta find out who's trying to frame me. I think I know. Oh. Just get out of the house and...
Hey, OT, it's Bryce. Your door was open. T. Jesus Christ. T. T. Who did this to you? She's a fucking, she's a fucking bitch. She's fucking got me. Who got you? <laughs> look, 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 just stay calm. I'm gonna call, I'm call the hospital. Just, just take the money. Just, just fucking run, man. Just fucking go. T, stay with me. Come on, T, stay with me. T! Nina? Oh, Bryce. Thank God it's you. I'm so scared. I'm so scared. I found Talcott and he's hurt really bad. I was just about to go get help. Why didn't you call an ambulance? I told you I was scared. <laughs> Shit doesn't make any sense. Talcott's dead? Somebody took my gun out the drawer and placed it in Martin's murder? So if you're telling me you had something to do with this, you need to let me know no, no, right no, 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 now. No, baby, no, no, no. Let's just go far away. Just you and me. You don't understand. Well, make me understand. Because my best friend is in there dead. Okay. Marty got greedy. He got greedy. He wanted more than his share of the money. And then Talcott got involved. And then you got appointed to be Jack's probation officer. And then things just, things just went crazy. Like. I mean, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, but if you're telling me you had something to do with these murders, you need to let me know now. No, 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 babe, listen, listen. What I'm telling you is I have $5 million stashed in my car over there. Internal Affairs is gonna let you go from the force. We can go far away, just me and you. I don't know what you're talking about. What money? Don't worry. Don't worry about the money, okay? Just don't worry about the money! Yeah, what's wrong with you? Don't worry about the money. I guess I owe you an apology. You think? Yeah. Dr. Calloway was clearly out of her mind. I mean, it's confirmed that she killed Talcott. Blood was all on the knife. Plus, the security cameras from across the street saw her walking from the hotel room the day that Martin was murdered. She planted my gun at the murder scene. But look, it seems so, but... What I don't understand is, why would she kill Martin and Talbot? She put it off on you. Oh no, Cap. I guess I was an easy target. Cap, we got a duffel bag full of money over here. 
Why am I not surprised? Look here. I'm going to reopen the Anderson murder case. I'm going back to a residence tomorrow to search out everything. It's clearly I missed something. But in the meantime, I want you to go back to the station and give them your statement. You understand me? My best friend was murdered tonight, so excuse me if I don't feel like playing your fucking games. Okay, make it good, because as soon as you're done, I'm calling the police. I know what you did. Look, I killed the man that killed my husband. Everybody knows what I did. No, I know what you did. You know, a funny thing happened to me tonight. <laughs> the woman I've been sleeping with for three years just tried to kill me. Oh. She's dead, by the way. Who's dead? Nina Calloway. You know Nina, don't you? Yeah, of course you know Nina. You and her are good friends. Isn't that right, Summer Jackson? Or should I say Summer Anderson? Hell, it's hard to keep up with who you are pretending to be these days. <laughs> Figured you'd want to take a look at these, you know, before I send them to the police. case is closed. All these are, are filler photos of me and Nina. It means nothing. I know everything. Detective Talker told me. You know they found $2.5 million in the back of Nina's trunk? Man. It was your husband and Martin who embezzled that $100 million from his companies. But Somewhere along the line, you must have realized that your black ass wasn't going on the ride with your husband. So you set Jack Crawford up for murder. Nina kills Martin to tie up the loose ends. <laughs> I guess $10 million in insurance money is better than nothing, huh? Well, looks like you figured me out, Mr. Wilson. It's over and I'm taking your ass to jail. <laughs> I don't think so. You see, because you're wrong about almost everything. Well, for starters, your precious Nina, her and Martin been fucking for years. Hmm, Nina was a loose cannon, so what you gonna do? But, you know, you are right about one thing going wrong. Well, Actually, two things going wrong. See, my husband, he got cold feet towards the end, just like I figured. No, no, please, 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 no, 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 please. And you know, change the plans. So Martin had to get that throat slit. <laughs> and Jack Crawford. Man, all it took was a few anonymous love letters and calls and you know, a little bit of pussy to control that country monkey. You see, that was planned. But you, you weren't a part of the plan. Who would have ever thought that she would have became his probation officer? It was brilliant. So you set me up for Martin's murder to tie up the loose ends. 
Bingo! We have a winner! But, you know, Tailcott, see, he had to go. He started getting suspicious, asking for $2 million. I couldn't go for that. See, Bryce? You were all alone. You know? Wrong place. Wrong time. But now, you have me. And it's me and you, so what are we gonna do? I'm taking your ass to jail, and I'm gonna clear Jack Crawford's name. <laughs> I think you need to make a better decision than that. Because now, you have me. And you know that $5 million over there? Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Told you the $10 million would come in handy. No, no, please, please. Dr. Anderson, Garcia. Has anybody ever told y'all that y'all look alike? There was no Garcia at the ranch that night. And more than likely, he was undocumented. Because it's like the maid, there's no record on him. give my half away. Or the cops got the other half because Nina's dead. <sighs> I barely made it out of there. And it was like everything just went wrong. Oh, my love. Everything went right. The pawns have been sacrificed and the king and queen remain $100 million richer. <laughs> <sighs> so... Let me guess. Paris? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Today, a once condemned mixed martial arts champion, Jack Crawford, is scheduled to walk out of prison a free man after being falsely accused of a double homicide by a corrupt cop, Lieutenant Martin Steele and Dr. Vernine Calloway. The story reads like a Hollywood movie in that both suspects are now dead. Their deaths add to a total of five dead bodies with no real answers. Seems that like the only viable explanation has vanished with the late Dr. Wayne Anderson's wife, Summer, who has mysteriously disappeared. Authorities are now looking for her, as well with $100 million that has seemed to disappear from the shareholders of Dr. Anderson's company. When speaking with Captain Brown of the police department, his response to me was, your guess is as good as mine. This is Lisa Little, and I'm reporting with Eyewitness News from Jessup County Courthouse. Goodness, how are y'all? Good. You must be Ebony. I'm Jack. I've heard a lot about you from my daughter. Nice to meet you, Mr. Crawford. <sighs> Bryce. I don't know what to say, man. If it wasn't for you, I'd still be stuck in there in that hellhole. Literally putting your life on the line. Is there anything I could do to repay you? <laughs> Just take care of your wife and kids. But... Where did you get this? Live a good life, all right? I don't even know what to say right now. Look, if you keep on talking, I'm gonna take it back. You want me to take it back? No, take oh, it? no, I have man, no problem, got, you sure? I got this. Okay. Daddy, can the Crawfords come over for dinner tonight? Sure, if they're up for it. I mean, I'm not opposed. Here, you guys wanna go to Chuggy Cheese? Yeah! You wanna go to Chuggy Cheese? Yes. Baby, is that fine? Mm-hmm. 
it's on me. Damn right it's on you. All that money I just gave you? You thought I was gonna pay? No, 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 no. 